So the Action 4 has been out for some time now and I've been actually using this almost every single day to capture my rides, hikes and to put it up against other cameras, especially the GoPro. Now GoPro just released their Hero 12 which will be really interesting to test once I get my hands on one. I also have a video on the GoPro 12 itself where I go a little bit deeper into my first impressions and thoughts. So I'll leave that down in the description below if you haven't checked it already. So in today's video I want to share my experience using the Action 4 and hopefully at the end help you decide between this and the GoPro 10, 11 or 12, which all three has no difference in video quality using the normal profiles in the highest resolution. So when the Action 4 was first released, I also got my new bike, which obviously meant that I would spend a lot of time using this bike. And that also gave me the opportunity to test out the Action 4 a lot more than most other people here on the internet. So I've been actually using the Action 4 approximately five to six hours a day for the past three months. Not only from the release, but actually two months prior to that, since I received a copy to review. But I also wanna say that this video is not not paid or sponsored by DJI. So this will be my completely honest opinion about durability, battery, user experience, build and image quality, and so on. And there's one thing that actually caught me by surprise. But let's start with the battery, charging and storage, which is one of the things I look at when I either receive a new camera or buy a new action camera myself. Because to me, battery reliability is really important. Otherwise, I have no interest in using the camera, nor will I be taking it on trips, which is the main reason I get these cameras in the first place. Now, one of the things that separates DJI from other brands is their fast charging from zero to 80%, which only takes 18 minutes compared to the GoPro, for example, where you need to wait two hours for the battery to reach the 80% mark or a little bit more. And for me, this was huge when it was first introduced with the Action 3. And I've been actually taking advantage of this when I've been out riding. Trying to turn the camera on or off with gloves aren't always as easy. And sometimes I thought the camera was off, but it was actually running. So being able to charge each battery to 80% in 18 minutes makes me able to shoot videos for a whole day without having any downtime and carrying only one power bank. And if you decide to go for the adventure combo, which I have, you also get the amazing battery charger, which not only gives you an indication of how much battery is left by different color codes, but it also stores your battery safely without having them all over the place. And talking about runtime, I'm getting about one hour and 50 minutes in 4K 30 FPS, which is what I'm using. And these are reliable minutes without any risk of overheating or unexpected flaws. So as of battery life, charging and how you store the batteries and of course overheating, the Action 4 scores 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about image quality and low light. The Action 4 does not have the 5.3K resolution that GoPro has. And a lot of people, including myself, were expecting a resolution boost from 4K to at least 5.1K to keep up with the GoPro's image quality. But instead, DJI decided to optimize the pixels of their new 1 over 1.3 three inch SEMA sensor, which sits in the Action 4, which also results in a much better low light image. But as of raw image quality coming out of the Action 4, there's not a huge difference from the Action 2, to be honest. That's at least my opinion and even less looking from the Action 3. So the main focus of this camera is more directed towards the low light capabilities or scenes with less light, like overcast, early mornings or during sunsets. And one of the things I've actually been the most excited about was to grab my bike and go for an evening ride in the city. But before doing that, I also did a short test to see the results. And man, I was shocked. I mean, the quality looks all right, but just like the GoPro, the stabilization is way off when it gets too dark and things looks awful. I can imagine this being really good if you're walking though or doing a static shot, but as soon as you have some movement, it's not gonna look as good. And for me, as of getting an action camera, I'm really not into getting static shots. I want to use this for different type of activities that I'm doing, including low light. But as of the overall image quality and the other low light videos I've shot, which hasn't been 
too dark, it looks pretty awesome, though I still think these brands have a lot to work on when it comes to low light shooting. But I will also have my travel video coming soon where I will be taking the action for through different scenarios, including low light city walks and all of that to really test this as a travel camera. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed this video so far, make sure to hit that like button as well for the algorithm that will also help me make more videos like this. Now, as of features and different shooting modes, the Action 4 has everything you need. But now, in 2023, it might still be a little bit boring if you want more creative features. I believe DJI has the only camera that doesn't offer anything else outside of video, photo, and time-lapse and hype-lapse. Whilst other brands like Insta360 and GoPro adds more creativity to their brands, where Insta360 is in the lead if we consider the mobile app as well. So maybe it's time for DJI to add something fun instead of always taking the safe route like GoPro does with minor upgrades and only a few new features added. So if you're looking for a camera that has all the features to offer which can also give you that extra creative spice well then you might go for something like the Insta360 X3 camera or even the latest GoPro 12. Now as of making this video though DJI just released a new firmware update which adds the ability to pre-record videos just like hints Sight on the GoPro and the pre-record function we see in the Insta360 cameras, which is a great addition. There has also been added a high option for wind reduction, which would be awesome if it was only available in 4K resolution, but using this limits you to 1080p only, which is a bummer. There has also been optimized skin tones in portrait mode for the image adjustments where you find sharpness and noise levels, as well as stabilization optimization for cycling scenarios, and this might take away some of of the micro jitter that you might have experienced if you have been taking this out for some heavy uh, movements like uh, mountain biking or anything similar. But since I personally don't use a lot of features outside of normal video recording and I rarely take photos as well, the user experience of the DJI Action 4 is on a whole different level. I mean the complete package you get with the magnetic mounts, the battery charger, it's fast and snappy when it comes to turning the camera on or off and it works 10 out of 10 times. The user interface, for example, is top notch. It's easy to navigate without going through unnecessary steps just to get to the features you need. And I mean, it's the easiest camera to use in terms of video recording if you're not considering a 360 camera. And that of course comes down to the mounting system. You can place this wherever you want and wherever you have these mounts and it just snaps in place with no effort. And for vertical videos, you just turn it sideways and click it in place. It's just amazing how convenient this whole setup is. So as of user experience, no doubt 10 out of 10. Now, when it comes to accessories, there's not many accessories you need actually to get going with the Action 4. Basically, a few of the magnetic mounts, a selfie stick, and you're good to go. You don't need a dive case, for example, because this is waterproof down to 18 meters, which is the industry leading depth for any camera on the market right now without using a dive case. So, if you're going on a vacation, if you're going on a trip and you want to do a diving session, which is usually down to 10 meters or just below. 10 meters, you would need a dive case if you were using a GoPro. Now, if you're a vlogger or want to start a vlogging channel, or maybe you just want to record your videos and use the Action 4 as your talking camera, you can also connect a microphone directly to the USB-C port on the side without the need of a media mode, which you would need with a GoPro. So when I'm out using the Action 4, for example, and I want to talk or just have better audio, I use the DJI mic system, which connects directly to the USB-C port and gets recognize immediately when the camera is turned on giving me crystal clear audio whenever I need it so this is the audio coming from the DJI mic system connected directly to the action 4 how does it sound does it sound good does it sound bad can you hear a lot of wind the lavalier microphone is placed inside my helmet so 
it should take away some of that wind as well. I've also been using the new ND filters from Freewell, which also works with the Action 3, by the way. And I think these are much better value in form of usability because you just push them on instead of having to unscrew the main lens cap for them to screw back on the ND filter. And I also find the originals from DJI to sit a little bit too loose, whilst the one from Freewell is actually a bit tight, making it more secure in place. Using an ND filter is not a must though, and it's not something I use with the Action 4 all the time, but if you're up to speed on a bright sunny day, it will improve your image quality by lowering the shutter speed and ISO, as well as give you that natural motion blur. Now, like I said, it's not something I use all the time, but for those scenes, it's a must have. I'll leave a link to the filters down in the description below if you wanna check them out and learn more about these filters. Now, reliability, this is my number one concern with all devices I use. If it's not working properly, there's no way I'm gonna use it. And like I said in all my videos, as well as comparisons, I don't mind the low resolutions as long as the camera is reliable. So when I'm looking at reliability, I'm looking at the battery and how the battery performs, the files recorded, and if there is any files getting corrupted over time, the screen and menu navigation, and also how the screen behaves when going from above to below water and vice versa, whether the camera is automatically trying to change some settings for you, which have happened to many of my cameras before, even though I locked the screen. And of course, overheating and how hot the camera gets after running for about 30 plus minutes in different environments. And the last is the mounting system. And based on my experience with the Action 4, it ticks all boxes and I've had no issues at all. So we have the Action 4 and the GoPro 11, now 12. But like I said, if you wanna learn more about the Hero 12 and the upgrades from the 11, I also have a more in-depth video on that with my first impressions and thoughts down in the description below. But these two cameras are most likely what you would consider if you're looking to get either one. You would most likely be doing a lot of research and go watch a ton of comparison videos. So if you're looking for a camera which is easy to use, by that I mean flexible, has better user experience, easy mounting options and can charge fast regardless of having a charging case or not, the Action 4 would be the camera to choose. It also has incredible low light image if you're doing anything else but riding your motorcycle, even though I have a few more tests to do before I give my final verdict on the low light capabilities. And if you want a little bit better image quality but don't mind the hassle of unscrewing your camera for each time you want to change to a different mount. And yes, you will still have to do that with the Hero 12 because the only difference here is that it now has a quarter inch screw so you can buy additional accessories to make it easier but that would also add to the cost but then the gopro hero 10 11 or 12 might be the better option the hero 12 also has this vertical shooting mode in camera now which allows you to shoot vertical videos natively without rotating the camera or change the aspect in post which is also nice there's also a difference in color profiles when it comes to these two cameras where gopro has that well-known vibrant GoPro colors, as well as a 10-bit flat profile, the Action 4 has that DJI normal color profile and a 10-bit D-Log M profile, which I think is the better of them all. But again, this comes down to personal preferences, and I must say I love the GoPro colors when I capture footage from a more tropical place, so it will still be interesting to see the differences between this when I travel back to Hawaii. But since I don't have my hands on the Hero 12 yet, I can only speak for the Hero 11, which is the exact same camera with the exact same processor and the sensor as the Hero 12. And from these two, the Action 4 has always been my first pick because of the easy to use system. So there you have my shorter long-term review of the Action 4 compared a little bit to the GoPro. There's still that low light image I'm working on though, trying to figure out if I can get a better image when I'm riding my bike because this is one of the main things I will use the Action 4 for when I'm out riding these night shots or want to capture some, some low light shots on my motorcycle. As of now, this is the biggest flaw that I can experience and it does not live up to the hype. But like I said, I will be doing a lot of testing and hopefully I can manage to resolve this issue. So that wraps it up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by dropping a like down below. I'm also curious to know your experience with the Action 4 in low light, if you already have one. And if not, will you be getting the Action 4 or will you be getting the Hero 12?